Great. All right. Let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the meeting to order. Any public comment? We don't have anyone here today. <laughs> so we can move right past that. All right, so our first order of business was to review the budget calendar and create our meeting schedule for the year um, approximately so that we can put it on our calendar so everyone can plan and also so Angela can book rooms. Um, apologies, we're having, again, technical difficulties or else this would be projected but we will do our best to be um, efficient and go from there. Um, what I have pulled up is I have our uh, finance committee calendar from last year, so we can compare it to kind of how many meetings we, we needed last year, um, and we can try to create our meeting around the budget calendar that Lynn produces. open that up and what I'll do is I will type this up as we talk and then uh, I'll save it to our I'll send it to Angela and I'll send it around but I'll also save it to our Google Drive um, I gave I sent an invite Kevin um, and Jen to you guys for access to our shared drive for FinCom so if you did not get it to your town email or you have any issues let me know I'm not sure I mean I reported Yes, to the invite, and I'm not sure why it didn't show up on my iPhone. It, I usually get reminders and it attaches to my iPhone, so I'm not sure you received my reply that I was going to be here. But. Well, Angela would have. Did you see that Kevin said yes, he'd be at the meeting? Hi, Michelle. Um, I think it was five people that said yes that I that I saw. So, and I can't remember. I'm I think pretty, I think you I'm did, sure but this is separate from that. So there's okay. actually is no signal. what we have is we use uh, Google Docs as part of our North Andover emails. Okay. We save everything there, and it's a shared drive, so everyone can see the documents, okay. and you can edit them. So it's really helpful when we start um, accumulating stuff for this fiscal year and start looking at the warrant letter and what we're going to write. So if you guys didn't get that, if it didn't go through, let me know and I'll resend it and we can work on it after the meeting. Yeah. Make sure you get it. Okay. So if we look at the budget calendar, I would start there. That will help us. And we... Um, We've already had our revenue and fixed costs first meeting, so Kevin and I were there um, with Lynn and Jim Mealy and Greg Gilligan, um, which was really helpful, and we'll finalize that uh, in two weeks probably. We'll have one more meeting. If we need a third, we'll have it. If not, we will um, we'll be done uh, in two weeks. Um, I think, you know, you guys tell me we have – the operating budget instructions are distributed in November. We have the town manager presenting the five-year financial forecast in December. And the recommended SIP isn't forwarded till the December 17th. So we could have a meeting in November or we can skip a meeting in November and have one in December because we're already close to the beginning of November. I think I don't know if The, the only reason we had a meeting last year in November was to work on our policies and procedures. So if we're okay and comfortable kind of working on that separately and not meeting about that until December, we could do that and we could skip a physical meeting in November, talk about the town, me town manager's recommendations and the SIP in December, and then kind of start in earnest there. When is the town manager? Um, it's going to be presented to the Board of Selectmen on December 16th, and then you guys will get it on the 17th. So we can have, um, let's look at the calendar. Um, for the capital, the, the operating doesn't go until January. So I, I would recommend that we 
have something potentially after the five-year financial forecast after the second because I think with the holidays it will be challenging to I think the first right after the second I'm pulling up my it's a Monday so we could we could have it the third or the tenth for sticking to you know our Tuesday nights I would say the tenth give us, gives us some time to di to digest that, and then, um, and I and I think in the meantime as well we'll we'll think about our policies and procedures, and we can touch on that on the tenth. So those will be the two main topics. Our next meeting will be December tenth. I I think that you know we're already kind of in November. That probably works. Just get that in there. Yeah, we need time to go over it. I mean, if there's no value, if this is, if you really think we need another meeting, you could do like the third week of November. But if there's no value in it, if we don't have enough to. I'd prefer to save our, our you know, everyone's time until we're that's in fine. the thick of the budget season and we really, you know, we need to meet. Because yeah, there will fine. be one or two months where we need two meetings a month. And yep. I want yep. to, I don't want to, everyone's busy. So we'll pick the dates and then we'll different locations later. Yeah, Angela will we'll check on them. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just keeping track of the meetings, the dates, and the purpose, and then we can fill in as needed. Um, so this would be policies and procedures and five-year forecast. All right. So the next one would be to review the revenue and fixed cost committee. Oh, well, I guess we'll be done as well, right, by December 10th? Yes. So we'll add that. To the December 10th meeting. Our next meeting I would assume would be maybe after the superintendent submits. Yeah, and so we can do SIP and school committee at once. Yeah. So let's see. That's that's January two, which is a Thursday, so the seventh? January seventh. Oh, January. Th Let's see. What am I looking at here? Superintendent. Okay. Yes. Seventh or fourteenth. Seventh or fourteenth. Yeah. Um. I think the seventh. Right. I don't see why not. Everyone's back in the swing of things by that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about about this. I feel like I'm staring. It's working. The screen. All right. That way we could actually stick something else in January if you think that's necessary. Although you don't even have to schedule that now. Let's see. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What what did we do? La la when when were you doubling up in in February and March? Yeah. So last year we met. Because when is this sit for the different com? It is for the on December seventeenth. So on the seventh is when we'll meet. Are you gonna ask to have the departments come in? Yeah, we well that will be oh, after yeah. they submit their operating budget, right? But you, for the capital I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. The first two of the year we normally have a, the investment. So they came in and presented their investment plan. There was always beginning of the year and then the operating budget then always a little bit later the yeah. Budget, yeah. And I think we focused on the big ones right yeah Town, uh, the let me see what we did DPW 
<clears throat> okay, so then do you want to do you want a second meeting in January and we'll just hold it for presentations? Or do you want that to be on January 7th? Well, that makes sense because if, if you have the day available, we might not use it. You don't know what's going to come up. But yeah. that would make sense that, that you would have something blocked off for that. You know, you might, because it might be some, some presentations can happen on the 7th and then some. If we need an extra we meeting, we'll just hold it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's do something at the end of January. If we did the 28th, it's after the Board of Selectmen vote on their, cat, their CIP. Their CIP. So we could do it. And after the school committee's public hearing, too. <coughs> Anything else came up with that? Is that the right date that was this morning, too? No, no, it's was the 20th. Yeah, I just didn't know if that was the yeah, one. Good catch. Thank you. Is it the 23rd? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so what'd you say, Sasha, 28? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have that as a hold. So our next meeting won't be until after we're forwarded the recommended operating budget. So it's after February 11th. But we have to also vote on the SIP on the 13th. What is vacation? Someone with children. It will affect me because I will not be. OK, so what do you remember? No. Right, we can okay, hold on. <laughs> Looks like it's the week of the 17th, I think. That would make yeah, sense. Yeah, it's the third week of February, always. Yeah, it's the week of President's Day, right? So, so I'm also free. I'm, I'm not intending to go anywhere. Do Seventeen to 21st. Do we need to... Um, <coughs> Do we need to vote on the capital improvement plan on the 13th, or is that date fluid? Um, I think it's fluid. It's just you get, you're trying to break it up so that you don't have to vote the capital and operating at the same time. It was just an, a date. OK. Yeah. It's, so it's a, it's a, it's why don't we can, try? I mean, as long as it's close within it, it's an estimate. 18th? The, well, no, that's, the, that's vacation. So the 18th is vacation, so why don't we meet on the 11th? And we'll vote on SIP on the 11th. February 11th? Yeah. So we'll, make, we'll change that to the 11th. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. You did that, Lynn, because we don't get the operating budget until the 11th. Yes, right. So, so you'll get the budget on the 11th, but you're not going to do anything. You're not going to vote anything on it. You're going to vote on the capital, right? So you'll have the capital already. We'll vote on the capital, but it would be nice to have time to review it so that we could have someone come talk about it that night and not waste the a the operating budget and not waste a meeting. If that makes okay, sense. Okay. Yeah, but I'll be here. Okay. Um, and I'll see if. Um, well, we can talk closer we'll and figure out. Too. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you need her, if you, can, if you want her to be here. I think we should um, 
But if most of us are available during the vacation week, we can have it. I don't, I mean, yeah, I'd rather not because we want to make sure everyone can vote. Um, if I'm the only one that's doing my school vacation week, I'm happy to dial into a, a meeting or something like that. Like, yeah, it's okay. It's not, it's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. It's okay. I might, I might not be here. Right. Next one, yeah. Okay. So, um, CPC report is March 23rd. So, we should have a uh, guest from the CPC in before the 23rd, right? Because their report, or do you want to do it right after? Is there something in between? Let me look at last year. You know, I think we moved our February meeting last year to January. And we voted on the capital improvement plan in January. That's your prerogative. I mean, seriously, though. To All right, we're just gonna we're gonna keep it on, and yeah. as we go, as we go, we'll rearrange. Yeah. I mean, you'll figure that out. What you want it. It'll make more sense as you go. You've got the available meetings. Got it. All right. So March. Do you think it makes sense, based on what the CPC provides as a report, to have them present before or after their report is due? You might have an opinion about that, Chris. Or what do you? Wait, say that one more time. So there, the CPC re committee report. Is on the 23rd. Do we want them to present to us before they produce that report or after? Probably right after? I would say after. So let's see what. I mean, because they're reporting on what on their what they've decided, right? I mean, we, we don't influence what their decisions are, generally. Right, I just didn't know. It just gets us to the end of March. So yes. I didn't know if we preferred a meeting before. So, but I guess there's actually the 31st is on a Tuesday. No, so I think if they're coming to us in March, I think that's fantastic. Well, hmm. so let's have them come March 31st. Sounds good. We'll ask. So we're going to go from the 11th to the 31st with no meeting? Yeah. Well, you have vacation in between. Yep. Or else we would do it later. No, I, I'm, I'm away almost a week and a half from, Mar from March 1st to the 10th. So um, that's okay with me. I would do it the week before the 31st, but I want to I consolidate meeting. Yep. So if we can't have the CPC in until the 31st, let's, let's do that. Sounds good. And if something happens and we have to add a meeting, we'll add a meeting and who can come, who yep. can come. So how many meetings do we have in March now? One. Just one. Really? Well, we, you can always I thought add. thought it was at the busy, busy time, mm -hmm. February You can always add one in, I mean. So six weeks of nothing and then, I mean. You might want to have something on the 17th and the 31st, but I mean, hold place as a placeholder. Looks like what we did last year. Really? We had <coughs> only one in February, and then the next one end of March. We had a tentative. We had one in February, February 13th, and we had a review of the operating budget by Andrew and Lynn. And then on the 5th, we had emergency management, DPW, fire police, and we reviewed warrant articles, and we finished our warrant letter draft, which we'll go back and we'll put the warrant letter stuff in there. Um, and then we had a March 19th tentative. We didn't have the meeting, we canceled it. So we had a March 5th. We had two meetings in March scheduled. We had one that was tentative, and we, we never had the meeting. We canceled so, it. And what was so so we what? had one on March 5th. Okay. So we can, we can if you would like, have a meeting on the schedule for March, so we'll have two, and we'll just put tentative like we did last year, so we have a placeholder if we need it. How's that? Right, because you'll want the departments to come in for the operating budget, correct? Yeah, and, and w with the meetings we already have, we'll have a couple of those. Okay. So you want to do 17 and 31? Slated? 
because you're back. You're not back till after the tenth, right? Correct. So let's do seventeen and thirty-one. Hey, Kevin Foley's going to be here on St. Patrick's Day. It's going to say. Oh, it's St. Patrick's. It's March seventeenth. I won't be here. Then. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We'll do. Uh, you know, I don't I have to be. Too, but I couldn't tell it was always on the same Oh, day. I knew it. Yeah, I knew you were thinking. I that. didn't even. That didn't even dawn. It's not on my calendar. I'm not looking at my real calendar, so. But yeah. you know, if I'm not here, then that, then I, that you should still schedule another meeting. We're gonna. All right, we're gonna put one on the the calendar for okay. the tenth. You would have some pretty angry department heads if you asked them to come in and present on St. Patrick's. <laughs> we'll come for Guinness. All right. We have a public hearing on the 8th and we vote on the budget on the 8th. When is the 8th? So in between, yeah, we have 31st and then the 8th. Lynn, remind me, does that ha that has to be on a Wednesday? I'm not sure. I think March 31st might be a local election. Mm -hmm. It might be. I, it just dawned on me. And then March, okay, March 3rd is the uh, uh, presidential primary. So we're not so touching that we one, but March 31st is the local election. You might have to change your day. <coughs> yeah, I'm saying Maybe like the thing. on a Wednesday. Or 11 and I, mean, I prefer the two of the days because it's my long night, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, because you're right, you don't want to have it on. Uh, you can't, you can't. No, Angela can't. Um, no, no, but we can't. can't anyway, we can't have any meetings on the right. election. Yeah. So that's the 31st. It's uh, I'm, so. I'm like 90 percent <laughs> sure it's okay. March 31st. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, that's the local election. All right, let me look back. Mm -hmm. I guess not really, but yes. It feels like it. People usually vote papers by January, so I'm too missing. And we did it on the 31st because we want. Oh, well, it depends on the rate. I mean, you know, if you really are going for it, you are ever preparing now. I just told you. <laughs> March 23rd. That's a Monday, then let's do it on the 24th. March 24th. Why didn't we do the 24th again? Was there a reason? No. So instead of the 31st, it's the 24th. So keep the 10th and the 24th? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Although, what did you say was the 10th? Did you say that something else was the 10th? No, the second. No. The third, she said. It's the, it's the first Tuesday of March is also the uh, presidential primary. Gotcha. Third. Yeah. Third. Third. Gotcha. And I can't wait. Okay, so the 8th, um, we have to vote on the budget. Lynn, is that a hard date? That has Is to be the well, eighth, right? I believe so. Yes. Think That's you're right. Why I was picked the eighth. Yep, per charter. Okay. It has to be so many days before. Af or be right, right, right. And after the budget is submitted, and then before town meeting. Yep. That's why the public hearing as well. All and together. So April. Yep. Eight. I know it was last year. I think. Yeah, it was. You're right. And then so April eighth. Yep. Okay. Uh, I would like to 
and then obviously town meeting. Yeah, so. yeah, so let's go through and talk about a couple things. Let's talk about, as part of this conversation, um, what else we want to put into our calendar. So I think the two things we're going to want to put in here are working on our policies and procedures and working on the warrant letter. So, so far for our December 10th meeting, I have us talking about our policies and procedures. And then from that conversation, I think we, it, we can add to our agendas, you know, the next steps. Would we touch in December also, would we <coughs> be thinking about you know, more of the long-term stuff? So some brainstorming around it, or are we just focusing on I want to do that the legal stuff? Hopefully. What do, you, what do you mean, long-term stuff? Am I not? It's on here. Areas of, allocate areas of focus. So what do you mean? Policy. I apologize. Yeah, you no, know, you know, um, one of our first meetings, we like, we were like, okay, what's a brainstorming, uh, kind of a brainstorming session, what could be really long-term? Yeah, so I, I want to discuss that today. And, right. and kind of have people, um, like I called it areas of focus. Oh, okay. So all right, all right. Um, we kind of touched on it. 10 minutes. Well, just who wants to kind of be responsible for those okay. things, and then we can dive in. Um, and if there's things to talk about at each meeting, then we'll leave a space on the agenda every meeting going forward where people can have the opportunity to okay. talk about that, talk about whatever you know they specifically want, want to mention or if anything new happens. Um, but for the warrant letter, when do we want to start writing that? I think, you know, we need all of the budgets, right? So let's, so February. So after the operating budget presentation, March 10th. I think that's a good opportunity to have people come with their notes. So whatever section you were kind of, I guess, responsible for, then you would come to that meeting with bullet points or, sp or notes to discuss with the committee. And then we can establish what our priorities are or what things we want to talk about. Does that work? Mm On the March 24th meeting, uh, let's have a first draft. And how about on the February 11th meeting, we can discuss format. I think format will evolve as we start to understand what our priorities are, but we might want a general idea. Um, February 11th. Oh, February. So I'm going backwards. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. And then the eighth. <clears throat> we'll review the final. Well, Lind, when do you need the reports due no later than the 10th? Mm -hmm. So we'll work through any issues on the 8th, and then we'll get the final draft to you on the 10th. Right, because we have to have time to, to go to print. To be distributed by the 27th. Does that seem too tight, Thomas? Of a timeline, you think? Okay. I think well, I think if we, as long as we have a first draft, so if I can get 
if if the March 10th meeting people don't come and say you know haven't done any work if the, on the March 10th meeting there's like substance to your outline then you can take you know you have two weeks to write up your section and then we ha we'll have a solid first draft and I think we're fine on that piece is there anything else people who, who are on the committee last year that were missing that we included oh um, let's walk through I'm gonna skip around a little bit let's walk through what people kind of want to focus on this year we talked about it a little bit last meeting and then we can incorporate that into our calendar so people you know then we can assign members to go to different board of selectmen school committee meetings have it incorporated into our calendar so you know that um, someone's going to be there to represent the finance committee in the audience uh, I created a, a little document but I can't project it so <laughs> sorry um, what I did was essentially outline the warrant letter sections we had last year I can read them and also the other areas we discussed that we wanted to be forward thinking about and so I think it it's probably a bit of a hybrid approach um, in terms of what people are going to focus on because last year we just split it up based on what we're going to write about this year we want someone to make sure you know someone available to write about them in the warrant letter but also there are other areas we may not are not necessarily huge aspects of the budget that we want people to be you know focusing on so in the warrant letter itself we had a section on uh, the municipal and shared expense budget so I, I think we can probably skip that I think you know I'll end up writing or someone will end up writing it as a as more of part of the executive summary um, we have the school department budget and within that I think Tim and Chris last meeting um, volunteered to spearhead kind of the schools we have the um, retiree health insurance and pension costs Tim and Chuck are on the OPEB committee and they you know I think Tim still wanted to be on that committee Chuck is in New York today so he couldn't be at the meeting do you also want to be add part of that as kind of a proxy so they are taking control but if there's anything that relates directly to yeah. health insurance or something that that you have knowledge about you're kind of a, sure. a third person if we need some representation yeah. an alternate an alternate that's what, <laughs> that's what we call it we have the reserve section Liz is not here to take the <laughs> reserve section so I um, we also have the capital improvement plan Thomas what do you usually what did you usually do capital do you want to mix it up this year nope I like, I like capital improvement plan Thomas here you go uh, don't stick me into the reserves I think uh, enterprise funds so I I think Jen the um, Stevens estate will be you obviously yeah um, do you want to switch then do you want to kind of take on the enterprise funds because water and or do you want to split water and sewer whatever put them together or they're big they're both big topics and since both of them are pretty large areas of focus this year maybe we should split them what do you guys think no Good. nothing about either of them so I'm happy to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you do you want? Yeah. All right. Well, actually, if you want, no, that makes sense. So. Both are big on the town manager. I mean, I, just from reading the documents, that they are high on the list. So. Okay. So Ed, do you want to take the water and sewer? John will take. The Stevens estate and I will be your alternate for Stevens estate if you need any support Great. on that or you need a proxy or anything like that and then we have reserves so Kevin are you interested in this at all I mean you tell me because we have other items I don't have a preference so so it's a it's actually a really good area to to focus on because sure. there's a good policy you get to kind of learn it it's a good thing for, for to be 
a part of, I think, to write about. It, it helps you understand our reserve policies because they're really important. Um, I can make sure that you have copies of last year's warrant letter, and Liz did a great job outlining those. Um, so I think that would, that would be helpful. The other areas that we had um, well, Divya, did you also do reserves with? What did I, you? No, I did the operating budget, general fund. Uh, oh, the municipal and shared yeah. expense budget. Yes. Also, I deleted part of that in my notes here. That's actually. Do you want to focus on that again, or? Sure. So the other items that we had uh, we had talked about, as Thomas mentioned, in the, our first meeting, Stevens Estate, which we have covered, um, OPEB, which we have covered, I'll delete those because they're within our foreign article, um, school capital funding. So we have that covered by you and Tim, but I think we really all talked about uh, the middle school, and I think we'll talk about that when we talk about the, the Again, really high on the list. The Board of Selectmen's yeah. um, priorities. So mm -hmm. we can circle back on that. So we'll take that kind of out as a separate item. I think the other things we talked about so we talked about um, the use of non disclosure agreements as a, you know, the, the town's use of them or if they use them. Just to give you guys an update, I did speak with the new town manager um, regarding a lot of things and just introducing myself, and she was awesome. I think she's going to be a huge asset to North Andover so excited um, and she has some great ideas I think you know for the finance committee will probably be really helpful if we need any guidance in you know re looking at our policies and procedures because she has you know a ton of experience in different communities so it's helpful to see what other places are doing as best practices um, and as it relates to non-disclosure agreements at this time she um, was doing a little bit of research on her end to see what she could provide us in terms of information. So if she could um, legally provide us with you know, the number of, if any, non-disclosure agreements North Andover uses and the amount in which those cost us, if any, dollars. So she is going to get back to me regarding that. So that's kind of the, the update and if I have any other information. Uh, I don't know if they exist at this point. That's the question we asked. And um, there was some information that we received from the uh, town council um, that we weren't unsure of so we spoke to the new town manager and she's doing a little bit of research on what she can provide us so as soon as she gets back to me I will let the committee know. Um, so the other thing that we mentioned in our first meeting was uh, public outreach and education so Thomas actually brought this up like, you know, are we providing the public with the information that they want? Is this helpful to them? Are there other ways we can engage the public and see if, you know, our outreach is successful? We haven't really had any follow-up conversations about that. I don't know if that's anyone's interested in doing some research about that. I don't know if, um, I think some of the things that we talked about were just a basic like on the website a questionnaire. I know Mark did that about town meeting. Thomas, were there, was there anything else you had you brought up because that was your you had kind of asked those questions? Yeah, no. We're just wondering, you know, is there could we have a quick survey? What people think about the the warrant letter in our summary? You know, is it is anybody reading it? Uh, or if they read it, I think we had like one or two. It's short, yeah. You know, like Sarah, um, yeah, our media maven. Now she's so nice. I just met her, uh, but you know, it, just a blast out an email and wherever she posts it to ask for feedback. But what would be the question? What would you want? I would love that, but I, I guess we'd have to figure out what we want to ask. Yeah. Because if we could, fi I mean, if we can figure that out now, I can follow up and right, and exactly. do it. Like, what would we like? What do you think? No, it's too general. What do you think the role of I think it's Congress? like one. What do you want to do? Do you go to town meeting? Right? Because if you don't go, are you reading 
are you reading the warrant? No, but I mean, do you want it to be a survey or do you just want to have to invite people to offer feedback? I mean, I don't know that anyone will, will respond if you give them an open forum. Do you, like if you just gave them, what do you think about the finance committee or what, what? Well, what information? Not committee, but con maybe general concerns, maybe they never attended any town meeting and then if they have certain uh, areas of concern that they want to. What information do you expect from yeah. the finance committee and what format do you want that information? Or are you getting the right information that is informative? What would you like to hear? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a high, like, high likelihood that we really won't get any response to the, you know, to the question because. Like, yeah. And I think if the letters. I, I have a feeling people letters, generally have a wrong. Uh, in, in about people's knowledge, they're going to get lost in it. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go on Facebook? That, uh, that edge, um, we can. To I'm, to I'm, I like I like feedback, so yeah, I have no, no problem posting that to whatever or somewhere else. I, yeah. I think it'd be helpful. Well, see if it comes out from um, the t the town manager's office, you know, from Sarah. Yeah. Then you just take her thing and you just like post it wherever you want. Is your finance committee providing you the information you want? As simple as that. That's general, simple. If if no, if yes, what information is, if, is if most yes, helpful? If no, what information would you like to see? Yeah, exactly. That's Kevin right. Fuller yeah. coming in with the, the, all right, so repeat that. So what would you like to hear? <laughs> repeat it for me? <laughs> Can we rewind? I don't remember why I said that. <laughs> what, what do you need from the finance committee to be prepared to vote? Intelligently. I, I, maybe it came, I, I, I don't know if that's already too specific. Very general. Um, <laughs> What information would you like to would you like your finance committee to provide? Is your finance right. committee providing the information you need? How about that? Is your finance committee providing the information you need? I'm, I'm, you just, want, I'm just wondering how many people know for the finance committee. Well, <laughs> that's the <laughs> <that's, laughs> they stop there already. What well, is that's going a CAM program. So you know, a, what is the FinHouse? Yeah, but you know, I, it's, no, I'm not, I'm not, it's no, about, be serious. You know, it, it, it's just, I get it. Yeah, I agree. You know, in very general terms, do you, mm -hmm. do you have an understanding about the financial health of the town? Yeah. In, in, in that direction, not mentioning finance committee or, you know, I think okay. that's too technical and too, too specific. And, and maybe somebody, you know, who is normally not involved says, you know, actually, I'd like to know more, but I don't. And I don't even know where to start. Well, they're going to have more information, right? Because North Andover is going to be part of ClearGov. Is that right? So. Yeah. We'll have, they'll have a lot more transparency and ability to kind of drill down into the budget in a really, I think, transparent way soon. Um, I, I guess I don't, I don't know. What, well, let's, um, let's start backwards. What are we looking for? How about like if you say something like every year the finance committee reports at town meeting on the town board. Do and you we, read it? Maybe we can attach it. Like you know every, I mean? maybe we can attach it. Do you want this to be specifically about the warrant letter we write? Or do you want this to be about information that, the, actually, maybe we should broaden this because we're about to look at our policies and procedures. And so are we providing taxpayers with what they're, they're looking for their finance committee to provide them? I mean, it really is as simple as that. I mean, so it's somehow to put that, that it's intriguing to someone to answer. But I mean, I'm seriously. Does anyone want to see as basic as do you do you feel like you understand how the town spends its money? Do you want to know more? Like, do you feel like you get enough information about that? Do you want to know more? What I mean, more would you want to know? Or something like maybe just something really basic and gripping like that might get them. Because if 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 you make it too general about the town's revenue or spending, then you're going to get into areas that we really are not our purview. Absolutely. I mean, we're not a revenue generating. Is your finance committee providing you the information you want? Yeah, that's it. That really is it. Are we providing the information that you want? If no, what do you want? Yeah, and if yeah. no, what, what would you like to see? How would you answer that? How would, we, how would I answer that? Yeah. Is the finance committee... It's a loaded know, question. It is a loaded question. Mm -hmm. It's a loaded about. question. Some really people, as you said, won't know who the finance committee is. Should, I, should we establish? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just because you'll get, because you'll you'll get. Who knows? If we actually get people to answer, it would be really interesting. It'll be interesting to see what what people have to say. You don't have to 
preface it or give any more explanation than that. If people are like, what's the FinCom? There that's you the, go. That's a tremendous answer. That might, that might drag them in to say, they're asking me this for a reason. Maybe I should be. Mm. Maybe I should be looking into what the FinCom, what information yeah. FinCom is providing. It may be a hook. Yeah. Well, we just, I just don't know if we're going to get helpful and answers. Help us in future also well, let's we put it this way. Exactly they are looking for. You might not get great answers this time, but the but second the future, time, yeah. you might be able to have a better question or a different question based on that kind of feedback. If you get no feedback, that's a pretty distinct answer. You know, if you get feedback, you're, you're going to throw that out there. Throw it out vanilla. Plain, plain, plain. Is, is everyone in agreement with this approach? Is that what you want to do? You won't hurt my feelings. I'm not invested in, I'm not invested <laughs> in the question. But I would be curious to see what people would say. To yeah. Them. And if you got people, I mean, like, you know, people's. But you may have a different question you want to ask because this is your idea. So go ahead. I mean, yeah, you know, just maybe we'll, we'll uh, focus on um, people who are coming actually to the town meeting. You know, that's always between 500 and 1500 something right yep. um, and at least they are somewhat interested in what's going on in the town and I at least when so when they read the warrant in our summary do they feel they're informed about the finances um, and just forget about you know 80% who doesn't really care what's going on in, 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 in town and I don't know if we're ever going to get to them but at least the 10 or less, not, not even 10%, 5% who are interested, do they actually get the information? Do they feel they get a, um, um, you know, is the summary helpful? Is it too long, too short, not focused enough? So you could say, do you go to town meeting? And that's somewhat rhetorical. Do you go to town meeting? If yes, is the finance committee providing the information that you need at the meeting? So I think, you're going to get much different I'll answers if you. Be more helpful to your understanding the issues. Do you want an open-ended question? Are you expecting a couple sentences, or are you? If you ask a yes or no I don't question, think anyone's going to give you more than a couple sentences. Yeah, so keep, maybe one or two. Know, keep it open-ended. What? Well, what, what, what could the fi uh, assuming you've read the assuming you read the warrant letter? What could the what, what additional information would, would you benefit from well, understanding before? you know, to, to be most productive at the meeting. What's the goal? So I think we're, we need to work from the end backwards. So is the goal to find out how we can improve the warrant letter? Or is the goal to find out how as a committee we can be more helpful to the community? Like what other things that we can provide or information we can focus on that can be more helpful? So because I think if we just focus on, you know, participants at town meeting, and then specifically their feedback on the warrant letter, that, that's going to give us a very different response than if we have the initial well, op more open-ended well, questions, I think. How can you be more helpful to you? Look at it this way. All right, people who want to know. Who really want to know what goes on in the Finance Committee. It's not that difficult. These are all public meetings. They're yep. televised. They're taped. You don't even have to have, you know, you don't have to be aware on the right day. All of that, you know that. That if any, any of the town meetings, uh, the, the, the local committees. So when you say like, you know, the issue is always what can we do more to get this information out to people? It's hard to imagine that as committees, all of the committees could do more to get information out to people. Because even as much as you do, people still don't have the information. I don't know. Asking people what more could we do is a reasonable request because seriously, in your own mind, what physically more could we do to inform the community other than putting sitting down in people's living rooms and having a discussion? Well, I think not for, we are transparent in what we provide, but I think it's what we focus on would be the change. Yes. Then, right? It would be. Yeah, it so would that's be. so that's a different. That, so that's a different question, not how can we get more information out to you? What should be, and, and again, well, I, I, that's why it was, I think, worded 
how can they provide you the information you, you want or need or better provide you? So I guess I, you, inter- I, you interpreted I, that as was, access, yeah. Yeah. and I thought of actual focus or information. So you're right. That's a really good point. So we should figure out what we're looking for because you're because we shouldn't be asking how can we be more transparent. I think we're very transparent. Yeah. So it's how, you know, are we looking at the things that you're interested in us are looking you, at? Are you getting the information you want? That was my question. Yeah, yeah, and that is the question. Are you getting the information that you want? Because the people who want information, the ones that are frustrated are the ones like, I want to know this, and they're never talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what... So then, that's, someone, then someone might say, I want you to know. I want more information about this. That's right. You, I don't hear, I'm not hearing about the middle school. I'm not hearing about... And that might be helpful to, for us to see. To Maybe there's things that we're not thinking about that's that, right. that, that that's may... Right. Help that's us, right. but that's not providing us with feedback on the warrant letter. So maybe this is a multi-part question. Maybe it's asking, a, you know, is your finance committee providing the information you want first, and then it's, do you attend town meeting? If so, are you, in yeah. specifics about the warrant letter? And there's still not that many questions. It'll take two minutes to to, yeah. to do that. You want to think about those? Do you want to think about those, and then I also have some friends who I think do this for a living so I can give them a call and see what they think about yeah. the you know get we can try to get it rid of any biases and yeah fix our questions a little bit and does that work works for me okay I'm gonna I mean it is nice to have that vehicle now if you're hooked in to get the emails I mean get, I get emails it's from awesome. like every I love it from every committee I love it I mean something's wrong with me but I'm just writing this down. Yeah, if you want to know, man, you, you can get tons of information. Okay, that was helpful. Uh, and the last thing on here is policies and procedures. So we started a process of um, we started a process of discussing our policies and procedures last year. We received some initial edits from town council. Um, I think that we need to do a significant review of our policies and procedures. Um, I think that it's really helpful to also review, um, which you all have, the um, Finance Committee Handbook from the Association of Town Finance Committees. It's really long. So (laughs) what I found most helpful um, is some of kind of the, the the introduction and then some of the big there's a list of things that um, the author recommends you kind of consider as a finance committee those if, if anything if you only have a little bit of time to review it I would ask that you review the, that those sections that, um, the role of the finance committee and then there's some interesting stuff in chapter one, but at the end, I think, it has kind of a list. And I can uh, send you an email with this outlined if you'd like, of uh, some of the things. Appendix H, a finance committee checklist. I thought was pretty helpful. And I think that will, will kind of start making us think about what other finance committees are doing and help us shape our policies and procedures around best practices and, and what we're thinking. And also, um, legally, we want to make sure that we're not reiterating things that are already outlined in the charter. And our policies and procedures do that as they stand today. Um, so we want to refine them a bit. Um, I have some, some ideas and feedback, but I'd also love a legal perspective. Kevin, I'm putting you a little bit on the spot. But would you be willing to take kind of spearhead policies and procedures from a legal perspective sure. since we've kind of had Jen on the Stevens estate sure. side? Would that be? Yeah, no problem. That would be great. Um, and I think the rest of us can provide feedback on how we envision um, how we operate today, some things we may like to incorporate that still fall within our purview, you know, to still stay as a finance committee. We're not creating policy. We're not the board of selectmen, but making sure that we're um, we're thinking about best practices from all different communities and incorporating them into what we're doing. Okay. Because it's the right time for it, I think, as we're reviewing the document. Does that work? I'm happy to help out on that too. Sure. Awesome. Good. I'm basically 
It's so wonderful to have you both. All right, so I'll have that in here. And Jen as a, I keep saying alternate, that's the wrong word. <laughs> Backup, <laughs> assistance. Public outreach and education. I will reach out to some friends in that market research sector and I'll come up with some worded questions and get their feedback and I will circulate those um, for review. How's that? Um, and typically, uh, we have Tim too. Oh, Tim's we, school. Um, for the warrant letter, uh, I will write the executive summary and the conclusion. Um, and historically, I've been editing them for the last couple of years. But anyone else, if that's something, and Chris has as well, but as if anyone else likes to do that, always happy to share. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you write that you want to write, that's, that's fine. Yeah, no, that's I don't have any problem with that. Same. Okay. All right, so those were some of our, our, is there anything else that you guys want to add to this? We have th these lists. Anything else we're kind of missing? I don't think so, but okay. Let's switch back, we're toggling a little bit, to the, the calendar. Um, now that we have kind of our responsibilities outlined. The town manager is presenting the five-year financial forecast on the 2nd um, of December. Does anyone want to go to that meeting? I can try to go to the meetings. I don't mind going to those meetings. Okay, Chris, and I will also try to go but I it's challenging for me to schedule that far in advance all right the 16th of December the SIP is issued to the selectmen I don't think we need anyone to go to that I usually watch them even if I'm not there me too but I, I you know I know it's different when you're there but I I almost always tune in way I can text Phil and say something silly <laughs> all right like Halloween hours they're from four to six right <laughs> it's too easy uh, this <laughs> that was evil superintendent submits budget to school committee um, I do think we should have someone at that January 2nd meeting. I'm assuming there's the presentation. For, for what are you talking about? Superintendent submits budget to school committee. Oh, I mean, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to go to all the school committee meetings. If that's I'm awesome. not there, I'll be watching, but that's my, I have to get a calendar. I'll really give it a shot. Okay, I appreciate that. And yeah. I'll put Tim on here too and just let him yeah, know. I mean, so yeah, there. so it's like if I, if I can't, I'll say I'm not gonna, you know. Yeah, of course. We'll try to work that out. But. And if one of you can't, just let me yeah. know, and we'll try to we'll try to have some representation there. Cause sure, why why not? Let's just go to all the meetings that we. All of them. <laughs> so I will yeah. say, um, the 23rd of January, the school committee holds a public hearing. I'm gonna put Chris and Tim. That's the January 3 one. Yeah, I'll put myself as an alternate if needed. We skipped over, um, apologies, January 27th, the Board of Selectmen vote to adopt the capital improvement plan. I'm not sure we, they typically talk about it before that meeting. I don't know that we need someone there. Um, so we can just leave that blank. School committee votes on school department budget February 6th. Chris, I'll throw you in there. Recommended operating budget issued to selectmen February 10th. 
I would typically go to that, but I, I know I won't be able to swing two meetings in a row, because back to back. Um, Again, we'll see. See how the, how the weeks go. Do, do they typically have a presentation that the same night, or is it later? No, I think they typically do. Okay. Yeah. And it's, a, it's just an overview of the, the manager's letter and the recommendations in some okay. format. All right, there's some more Board of Selectmen meetings. Does anyone, I mean, I don't know that we went to some of these last year, but the Board of Selectmen vote to um, vote on warrant article recommendations. I don't think we went to that last year. So I think that's okay. I think that's. Well, I mean, like, as I say, we'll take that week by week. All right, and we'll just coordinate. Yeah. Okay. So we have our calendar. We went over our, we skipped around. Okay. I think that, like, the month before the meetings, like whatever early in the month, you say like. We'll look at the agenda. Look at so. the lens, like is anybody planning, can it, you know, you'll Perfect. get a better idea. We can pick and if choose. If we, who need, you know, who yeah. may want to go who and may what's, go. what's happening. Or make somebody go. Perfect. Speaking of all these other meetings, have you gotten any additional information about the Stevens committee? No, at this time they haven't even selected uh, the other members, is my understanding. Yeah, there's something on the website. Lynn, do you know when they're selecting the members? The members? They're looking for. They're looking for. Yeah, they're looking for, for people. I don't know that everybody is volunteering or holding up their hands to volunteer for it. I'm not sure. How many more it. people do they need from the put four? Well, it's let's put it this way. What I think the desire was, hopefully, to have a pool of people mm -hmm. to choose from, so you could have a nice even whatever, whatever your criteria was. And I don't think that very many people have actually even applied. Yeah. We, as of the last meeting, it was maybe three or four people for both committees, for the, the trustees and also the long term. It was really, and so there's been, I don't on social media and, and emails and mm -hmm. stuff, there's yeah. been a lot of pitches to try to bring in more people. Since then, and since the last Board of Selectmen meeting that I watched, and now, hopefully more people have stepped up, but. Um, Board's next yeah. Will they vote, you think, at that point? I don't know. Or we're... Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. November. All right. Um, Trust let's me, I wish it would happen sooner. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like we need some help. Yeah. We need something to happen. All right. Let's, let's yeah. skip around so that Lynn doesn't have to um, sit here any longer. Do you want to go over the budget status report? And then we'll, we'll talk about the... Board of Selectmen budget policy statement after. Well, thank you for thank you for providing this. So this is okay. the, um, what Lynn is going to give us on a quarterly basis. She produces it um, anyway, so we're just going to get CC'd on it so that we have it. We could have accessed it on Google anyway, right? On yeah, Google on Drive. Website. Yeah. Under, um, under the, the annual budgets and financial quarterly budget. So it, th this gets posted um, once it's completed. So you, everybody would have access to it and download it. So the first quarter is, is a tough quarter to, to report on because, of course, it's the beginning of the year. It's only three months. So there's not a lot of um, big activity that goes on. So um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, trending typically towards what it has been every other year and uh, based on um, the first three months. So the property taxes are at 24.4% collected, which is what is expected um, for this time of the year. Motor vehicle excise taxes collections um, are at 8.8, .8, which is down slightly. But as I look through the collections, because I, I print the revenue reports on a weekly basis because I like to keep track of where we're at. Um, we are ticking back up to a higher percentage, but we won't know the full collections for motor vehicle excise until the commitment goes out in February, which is the large commitment 
for the year, which is usually the four point, you know, around $4 million, if not higher. It depends on how many people bought new cars, <laughs> on how big it gets and how the economy is going. So a as we get into the, the, the third quarter, you'll see that revenue source jumping up to the level that it should be. So, because what happens is, is some of these are, are, are timing issues as to when they're collected and throughout the year, so each quarter will fluctuate um, substantially sometimes. Um, mails tax collections is running right on, on online. Um, it says that it's slightly um, up from last year, but you gotta consider as well, budget is a little bit higher each year, so we it, it's a little hard to... Well, Exactly. So um, it, it is trending, and it will meet tar you know the budget, um, maybe slightly a little bit, a little bit higher. But I'd like to stay conservative and say well, at least we'll meet budget or equal to to what we got in FY19. Um, so it, it it did hurt us a little bit, but it didn't bring the revenue down. So it's going to be lower than than last year because um, we did have quite a few restaurants closed because of the gas issue. So. Um, payment in lieu of taxes is a is a collection that is um, steady, pro projected. Um, we get the same amount each year. We have the solar um, pilot, and then we have the housing authority. And the housing housing authority only fluctuates a couple um, thousand dollars a year, depending on what the budget is. So um, that's pretty st steady and right on on target. Ambulance collections are, are down slightly. Um, last year they were quite high. So again, very hard to project. You don't want to wish a lot of people to be sick and need ambulances. You would rather stay stagnant and, and at the collections, but it, it is running, it's right on target. Um, building inspection fees, um, plumbing, electrical. Collectively, they're at 28%. Um, typically, you'd like to, you know, it's it go through seasons. It'll pick back up in the spring. Um, running if, at this level will stay on target and meet budget. Um, I know. Everybody will be projecting the thought that we've got some bigger projects coming on. Amazon potentially will be pulling their permits. Um, I'm not anticipating that a big portion of those will be pulled in this year, so we will. Were all the fees waived last year for all the inspections that had to go on for all the appliances that were? For in? Columbia? Yeah. They weren't waived. They were re they're being um, got reimbursed. reimbursed through the substantiated claim process. Um, we're actually, that's the last piece of that that they yeah. were re reviewing. I mean, there's because a lot a of these lot. numbers must be skewed because they of, are. We had such a um, weird year. Last it was year. a very odd year last year. I mean, everything was being inspected yeah. last year. <laughs> it's it's Many crazy, times. and and everything's being inspected this year. Yeah. But those fees are being waived, and then we'll get reimbursed through Columbia Gas, yeah. which will go into a pool of money as far for the substantiated claims to be appropriated next year or the year after right. for other. Um, so it's purposes. really hard to look at these and. Yep. Yeah, it, it's going to be a tough year, um, pro projection-wise. Yeah, um, I don't foresee any issues that so far. I mean, looking through what's collected through October and through the you know four months of the year, um, we we will you know be right on target. I'm not expecting that we're going to have a lot of surpluses this year, probably like we have in the last few yeah. few years, but um, that could change. We'll see as we get further into the year and I report each quarter um, to you guys. And I, if I see things that are occurring dur during the months between the, the quarterly report, I absolutely report it to the Board of Selectmen and, and you guys would be informed of, of any different and change in status on any of the revenues. Um, in interest income is doing fabulous. <laughs> it's at 58.9%. Um, reason being at such a high percentage, we budgeted low because we were budgeting, not realizing that in FY19 we're gonna get $600,000 in interest income. So we had some great investments done with our, our cash. Our treasurer collected did, um, some tremendous work with that, um, which produced the, the high interest, and we're leaning towards that now. So we will definitely have um, close to probably another 600,000 again. Um, collected an interest income this year. That's why you'll see that percentage go up over 100, 120, 150, maybe 200 percent over budget because we budgeted conservatively because the previous year we only collected, you know, 120,000. So, um, and that happens when you don't have a full-time treasurer collector. We had some really big turnover. 
we're right now um, going to be filling that position um, soon. So uh, hopefully we'll be back on target again. Um, so factoring out the largest um, revenue in local receipts, which is motor vehicle excise, we are right on target with, with what is expected for this time of year um, for collections on revenues. Um, expenses, um, all departments, including encumbrances, are running approximately 24% of budget, which is consistent from wh how we track year to year. My, my goal is with all the departments, I have them encumber all the funds of what they know is going to occur throughout the year so that it doesn't get spent and they don't have shortfalls, which works out great. It, it gives us a better picture of what potentially is out there for any emergencies or things like that. And all our departments are very conservative. They are mindful when they're spending. They're not just spending to spend. So we're, we've got a good team of um, department heads and, and division directors that oversee all of that. So that helps, especially at ERN, to produce um, some potential free cash. Um, so moving on to the enterprise funds, um, water and sewer, with water revenue collections at 20% and the expend expenditures and encumbrances running at 22%. It's, that's what's expected with n normal operations for, for the water. Um, sewer is at, basically at the same level, 23 on revenue and 22 on expenditures. So no issues at this time that I can see. Um, I'll update, update everybody as needed if I see any issues. Um, moving on to the Stevens estate, um, collections are at 27.4%. They're down compared to the same time last year. Um, encumbrances are running only at 0.18% because they haven't been spending a lot because there hasn't been a lot going on up there. Um, as I've said, I'm extremely concerned. Um, looking at the bookings report from between October and June, there's only four events booked. Um, so it's they've gotten through the wedding weddings that they had through the end of October. There's only a couple, you know, holiday events between now and January 1st, and then moving forward through January um, in the first half of the year, it's very minimal. Um, we will, I will start producing uh, more detailed reports on the Stevens Estate and start including the bookings report, um, less the, you know, the names on the events, but just that what type of event it is and how many bookings they have each month between now and the end of the fiscal year, but I am, as I had said last year, that I anticipate the Stevens Estate using up all their retained earnings, which was just certified at two hundred and twenty-one thousand um, dollars, unless a miracle happens and we get all kinds of bookings between now and then. I don't foresee it being very profitable this year, um, and using up all the retained earnings will put it in a tough spot for next year, budget-wise. Where we're, we're working on how we're going to structure that for 2021. Right. So for the Stevens Estate, could you provide us with those detailed reports that, that you're already producing as well? So um, yeah, we well, I was just put in, a, a request was just put in by the Board of Selectmen to the town manager for me to start producing monthly reports of okay. the Stevens Estate with the bookings report. So the first report will go out for, through October, awesome. uh, which will be by the, the 15th of November. I was going to ask the two Um, for as far as between bookings and, and yeah. what bookings were it would have been last year at this time versus what they are this year. Yeah, I guess I'm just asking because I'm this is going to be right. one of my areas of focus and I'm mm -hmm. not super familiar with it. So in some ways, the the trajectory. Yeah, over time I mean, I have the data because I was putting some of that data together when we were trying yeah. to um, go to town meeting. You sent, I, you sent it to me before town special <coughs> town meeting last year, yeah. so I have I did. It. Okay, great. Yep. And we have and we circulated it. Yep. I, Is that? That and might be in some of what you have great. in there. It Fantastic. could be. Right. Right. So you, you okay. definitely have to review. Yeah. Um, I would like, what right. is this? I don't and you're more than welcome um, to call me anytime or email yeah. me, yeah. and She's I can help clarify some things for you. Yeah. 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 And I have it digitally, like in my, so I'll make sure, <laughs> I'll create in the FY, so the way we have the, the Google Docs set up now, I made a new folder for FY20. Oh, okay. so, I'll, so it's FinCom, then all the years historically that mm -hmm. we've had it, and then I have an FY20. So what I'll do is I'll, I will make a separate Stevens Estate folder, Great. Um, and we can, Put we'll put, you know we'll put FY19 in there and all the old stuff and then going mm -hmm. forward you can kind of take control of that new folder and then we'll have all the 
the new stuff. Great, thank you. So does anybody have any questions or concerns or? Nope, no concerns, it, well. Right. It's you know, no, but can we, could we kind of skip to the Munis report for the Stevens estate? Is there anything sure. that we should, did the liquor license for the Stevens estate get extended for a month or two? Is that um, what I, we're working on it. Um, I believe the okay. recommendation from the, the town manager is, is that we're looking to keep the license until at least June 30th. Because okay. taking the license away, we're pre- setting what the committee can do. We're really basically telling, you know, already right. making constraints on what the committee might recommend. So right. um, we are working on getting that extended. It, it expires on December 31st anyway. We just have to renew it. And it renews for the year, but we can make the decision that we can stop using it as of June 30th. It isn't renewed monthly. It's renewed annually Okay. on January 1st. So Understood. Okay. Yep. And then... In terms of their expenses, yep. Let me get to the, the transfer to ge the general fund, the mm -hmm. eighty-one thousand, that's established by the. Is that established by the auditors, or do you? I remember it, it, something it, specifically. As I remember you talking about that yes, before. Yes, there's a worksheet and formulas that I do it for this. All of the enterprise funds, they're all the indirect costs. So it, it's accounting for anybody that is um, within the department that has insurance, which would have OPEB cost. Um, it, it takes a share of all of the shared overhead costs, like for the that gets contributed to the enterprise funds, like some of my time, some of the town manager's time, public works, um, the school department, and it, it, it's a whole big analysis: retirement, health insurance, workers' comp. Oh, so even time is allocated to. Right, so it's all driven sense. around the headcount and who has insurance, how many people work there full time. Um, yeah, because there's retirement costs, there's health insurance yeah, costs, workers' comp. So if you have a full time employee at the Stevens estate that gets hurt, the workers' comp from the operating budget on the general fund pays for that. They don't have their own insurance, so they're covered under ours. So it's it was a, um, a schedule and worksheets put together by the auditors. And I update it every year. Does that include like snow and ice yep. removal and things like that? Yep. Too? Do you mind forwarding that? Just, just out of pure curiosity, I'd love to see what oh, like the all yeah, like what the what it looks like because it is for yeah. all departments. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, like what the water the enterprise fund each enterprise yeah. fund uses or doesn't use and how that's allocated. Yep. I think that'd be interesting for us. To yeah, it's all driven by percentages. Right. Yep. Um, and in percentages of salaries and things like that. Yep. Okay. I can I can forward that. That would be awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And else? how is this budget established? You, does the town manager have a conversation with the Stevens Estate budget? Yeah. Um, it's the director up there. Um, we'll put together the budget. No, no different than any other department would do. Um, the instructions go out to her, and she follows the instructions and looks at history you know, previous year's budgets, what she sees on her mm -hmm. bookings report, and what she's expected that she's gonna try and pull in for the year for events and what the cost would be. And so going forward, that will be part of the conversation with that, with the advisory committee, yes. where they would advise, okay, we need yep. to spend more on, I'm just- Advertising. That was my first yep. thought, $13,000 yep. to advertise when you need new bookings is challenging. Yes. It's a challenging budget. Exactly, are we advertising in the right places, <laughs> things like that. Yep. Okay. That makes um, sense. Yep. And then the long-term planning committee will will put together the the plan go forward right, right for the for the asset. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't have any questions. Do you got? Does anyone else? All right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So or we skipped around, but the last major item was just discussing the board of selectmen budget policy statement. I don't know if everyone has that, and I sent it around as well, or Angela might have. Yep. The 2021, the 2021 uh, budget policy statement. So the Board of Selectmen put this forward every year per the charter. Um, this kind of shows our objectives and strategic goals for the next fiscal year and helps them um, and the town manager kind of 
make decisions surrounding the budget. And so it's really good context for us to have to understand why people are making the decisions that they're making in terms of their budget and what areas of focus uh, the Board of Selectmen have and if any of those overlap with you know, what we've been interested in or you know, help us think about ways we need to frame the budget. Um, does anyone have anything that really jumped out at them in this before I dig in? I, I didn't know there was a playground master plan. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's published on the town website? Should be. Yeah, it is. Yep. And with regard to the, um, I see there's some interest in the process of developing a plan to replace sidewalks and perhaps even expand sidewalks. Is that something that's done in conjunction with the, the school department, the DPW, fire and police? I believe it is. I think they have a committee. And I know that Public Works, they're working on that plan. I don't know that it's the sidewalk plan is completed. I'm not sure. Any idea uh, what they're, they're hoping to spend a year for sidewalk replacement or um, Well, we do have a, a standing CIP that gets put into the every year. Is that 250? 250, 250 yeah. yep. Okay. Yep. It was 250 21 years ago. Actually. No, it, no, it was. It used to be 50,000, and we upped it like two years ago to 250. When I was on the board of selectmen in '95, it was 250. <laughs> Just so you know. Did they ever spend it? Uh, we spent it because they didn't have any sidewalks right. around right. Uh, yeah. the, the elementary schools or the right. playground. And I know they None at all. Them and then they None whatsoever. Down 50, right. and then they. <laughs> I know they're right. No, they want the right. connectivity yeah. to a child. I know that, and that's what they're working on. So and, you know, some of that goes to and they obviously are public safety for walkers to school yep. and walkers from playgrounds yep. and stuff like that. So I was kind of interested in that. Uh, that's one of the things. But I, I think, think it's spearheaded by public works. Public yeah, works. Yeah. The master plan too. Yeah. And it there, was part of it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess the one thing that I will point out, and there's other things to talk about, but that. Um, I found interesting. Um, if you look at the community development bullet, the Board of Selectmen will resolve any outs, well, that, the, uh, so that, that'll be, but uh, in, also in FY21, the Board will begin the development of Facilities Master Plan 2, which will identify needed improvements to three elementary schools, the middle school, the Salem Street Fire Station, and possibly other facilities. So in terms of timing and context, we have established that we're, we're pretty concerned about the schools and their capital planning. Um, you can probably speak to this being a former member of the planning board, Jen. The facilities master plan too, they're not gonna begin the development until FY21. So if that's part of facilities master plan too, I don't anticipate that we would see any kind of anything in the budget for a new uh, middle school or uh, elementary school for a couple years, I think right? Well, what there's been, as I thought it would make sense because it, if they don't know what it is that they want to do, there wouldn't be a budget for doing anything. And I mean, I see that there's the 50,000 for the, um, for a consultant for a plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's, that is a start. That's, there's, I could, it makes sense that that's the start. You have to start there. So I guess my question, you can answer this better too, is taking the, you know, putting the rest of that aside, if the middle school is lumped into the facilities master plan too, and we've already been applying for the MSBA, don't we already have somewhat of a, a, a plan? I don't know how those tie. Yeah, and I we've asked that question before, and I'm still a I little unclear. The, the applying is about, I mean, I might be wrong about this, is about building a new building. Am I wrong? I mean, is that what they're, you know, I. And so this and, potentially and is so, a renovation? And so what, what, I mean, I actually had a conversation with a couple of school committee members, but I, I said, like, w if that doesn't come through, what is your plan? Mm -hmm. You have to make a plan, you know, because we've already applied, what, for three years now, et cetera, yep. et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so the first step is always like, well, what can you do with what you have? Mm -hmm. Where can you go? And you have to have a consult. You have to have somebody hired to do that, to do an evaluation. Well, this is what we have. What do you need? What can what can get us by? What can we do if we don't qualify in the next several years? Because we can't wait ten years. We can't wait fifteen years. Mm -hmm. We can't even really wait five years. So th I think that's what has to happen first. It, you're going to have to get a plan, and the plan costs fifty grand. You're not going to see anything before. So, 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 so,
Say that again? Plus assessment of this line. Yes, yes, right. assessment of, I mean, we did this um, many years ago with the whole, all of the schools. I mean, we did it in a different way. We did it uh, with the teams of volunteers to go school to school and say like, well, does everybody have an art room? Does everybody have a music room? What's the storage right. like? You know, what are you using the schools for? And this is a, a school-wide thing. And then, um, you know, narrow in on like, well, what, what could we do to make things more equitable and, and those sorts of things. So the evaluation takes a really long time. Yes. But this is mostly focused on one school because we know a lot about the other schools, yep. you know, the things and that they that need. Start. Um, but the, the initial thing is the 50 grand to have somebody, an evaluation. If you look back at what's happened in the past few years, I mean, they did the same pro process with the ABECC. Yes. And they, what, they approved the 50000 one year, they did the plan, and then they came back to the school, to town meeting, got approval for the plan, yeah. and then my child was in the new building a year later. So, yeah. like, it, I think well, it, I think the middle school is a much different scope of a project, but I, I don't know that this means that, like, the middle school is necessarily... Ten years out, or oh no, I don't know. I don't know. And, and I think that's it's, a start. it's the first time I've ever seen something really concrete. in a dollar amount. We have it. We've been right. asking exactly. And this is it makes sense to me that the dollar amount is this. So and then after, how long is it going to take for the evaluation? Two months? Three months? Where am I missing the fifty grand? Sorry. Oh, it was in. Year. Yeah, it's in last it was, year. It's in the 2020. But that's days. right. But that right. But that okay. So I was so. But that's for the development of facilities master plan, too. So it's not just middle school specific. It's part of that whole plan. I thought it was middle school specific, no? No. Okay. So that's that was, I apologize, that was my confusion. So right. that's for the development of facilities master plan too. So now as they start discussing the results of the, cons the consultant's feedback about mm -hmm. facilities master plan too, then I guess we, our hope, and we'll see kind of how this right. continues, is that then they allocate funds for consultants specifically for the middle school, right? That would be the goal. So how much the goal time? Is the, the goal is for the consultant to put the plan together and prioritize the needs based on what hasn't been done yet. And the middle school would be one of those items within that list, I would assume. Um, that's what the goal is. When, do you know when that? I think it's gone out to bid, so we have, we have it's gone out to, to look for, to hire somebody, I don't know what process it's in, Laurie does that. So that, so that means office. that we won't get a result for how long does it take a consultant to mm -hmm. produce a facilities master plan? I'm not sure. So I, don't, I don't foresee any activity on it and probably we won't be able to use it until probably next budget cycle. So that really means that they're not gonna start talking about what to budget next for the middle school until an FY22 budget, yeah. correct? So we're really, so, so, so we're really. Right. I mean, you gotta understand, you, you want to get as much information and a plan in place to know how much it's gonna, what you have to do, and then plan the money around it. You don't wanna put something in our capital budget because we're gonna get stuck like we are right now with a couple other projects where we budgeted and put it in a plan six years ago and never changed the funding and now you're six years later and you have inflation and you're trying to build a project around a six-year-old plan. Well, yeah, but I'm, I don't right. think anyone's expecting that we would put together a scope for the, the full project to start. You, you'd have a consultant prioritize your projects and mm -hmm. then you'd put money aside for an architect and engineer and, and someone to... Right, which is what we do, which is the right. process. You do and the so first you year, as you had stated, that the design and the architect and then the next year you put in the funding for the construction because you've got to have all the information from the architect what they think it's going to be. That's, that's the planning stage, but the information gathering. Mm -hmm. Do you have in mind how much time would you give to the I consultant do. to okay. come up with the information gathering? And then once the information is gathered, then the planning starts. Correct. I think is the, there no set aside of funds before then? Though? Like we see this coming, like maybe not, it's not, not a couple. Yeah, and that's yeah. something that, we, that needs to go back to the school committee to say like, so. Okay, so if you look in last year's CIP, mm -hmm. the facilities master plan two, there was the fifty thousand in the first year, and then there was another almost six hundred thousand in the second year. Mm -hmm. Then it bumped up to I, I'm just I don't know off the top of my head the numbers, but it's yeah. over two three million dollars. Then it jumps up to five yeah. million, and that plan will be implemented because as you know we stay on the plan. We will shift that facilities master plan to into this year's capital and do the same thing. It's just going to shift over a year. 
So if the decision will have to be made when we put this CIP together, whether we keep that year two and move it into this year or keep it in year two again at the $593,000. And not so, like, the, so in terms of actual years, you're saying that the budget had established the 500, 50, almost 600 uh, grand in 50, FY21. 593, then there was like two or three million in for the five year for the budget so right. but this but the what's actually happening is that the consultant hasn't even been hired yet which right. means you're not going to have the information regarding facilities master plan two until after the right. CIP but we're putting placeholder placeholders of money in the capital to plan out for our budgeting purposes so if do you have the, the can you pull up the capital in, um yeah I mean, I get. I, Do you know what I'm saying? I absolutely know. So what you're we saying, did a five-year plan for the facilities master plan too, and put dollar amounts in there, yep. which will get adjusted after we get the, the the actual plan from the consultant, which will probably get to adjust it until next year. But we'll leave the money in there as it is. It's. I think. Uh, I, that, that the plan did not include the middle school at that point. I don't year. know. It, it was just, just the, the free elementary schools. It was like, right. you know, there's Franklin. Like, I don't know what the right. priority was. I think Franklin was not the first one, but there was a school before, and then Franklin, right. and then the other yeah. one. Um, Based on a, what was the information that was provided on the school needs at that time. And I mean, it, right. it, it wouldn't be enough money anyway for the middle school. Probably, no. Um, it's no. Not no. Because we know that they're filing Do you know if applications. Is, is there an active third fire station? committee right now that there not was that years ago there isn't one not, not that I'm aware of so I guess something that we should think about as a right. committee is you know looking at how the school committee is is viewing this and the board of selectmen and school mm -hmm. committees conversations surrounding this planning um, and we as a committee should think about what um, how we can and you know point things out maybe that other people aren't looking at from a financial perspective and I think since we understand the need and we've talked about that and everyone I think at this point understands the need you know how can we best plan for that because Thomas is right that did not include the middle school yeah but I'm a little bit concerned about I mean we shouldn't put pressure on anybody right now I think we should just let it play out so what is the school committee or what is the superintendent you know telling us in January. I don't think any, my intention was not to put pressure, okay. it was to go to the meetings and pay attention so we knew what was going on. Because there is, I think, I, I just got the there feeling like we're missing some numbers. It's like, just wait what, what, what they're saying. You know? No. And then, we'll, and then we'll, we'll ask our questions in January. You know, what it, you know, what do you think about the middle school? How is that rolled into your plan? What is the yeah. impact on the, on the CIP and then then? But I do think it's appropriate for us to ask for a multi-year forecast, which we have been, and I think we're you know, planning on receiving that this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that will also be helpful for us. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not disagree, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm not in a rush right now. I wait until we get the, all the papers and, and, and then we'll ask our questions. Okay. Does anyone have any other comments or questions about this document? Is the uh, Senior Center always scheduled to begin construction in 21 or the decade move back. Someone was asking me about that the other day and I was wondering why we hadn't started on it. You know, because it was an issue, right? So essentially there was a piece of land that was not, um, okay, so the, the amount of money that was approved at town meeting for the senior center mm -hmm. was based on a plan that also included an additional area for parking that was not actually part of our, our agreement with the developer. And we needed to provide additional funds to purchase this piece of land, this, Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong, um, in order to orient the building in a way in which our consultant thinks is the, mo is the best way to orient the building on the, on the site. And that requires this additional parcel of land to have adequate parking for the senior center. So that means that most likely we'll have to um, allocate additional funds at the next town meeting for that piece of land to add additional parking spaces if we want the senior center to be oriented on the parcel, um, the way in which our consultant is recommending. Is that? So we need more money. 
So how, how big of a, how, how expensive a piece of land is this for parking? I think it's 600,000. Uh, yeah, we have to get an appraisal. I think that's, that was the developer's right uh, amount. Well, that's what he paid, paid. It. Right, so we're, uh, the town manager is requesting an appraisal on it, so. Was it, the, was it the deal though that did he give us land in order he to- He donated do one piece of land. Yeah. This is a second piece of land that he purchased on Surrey Drive. Okay. Yeah. Which wasn't part of the original donation. Did anybody, uh, uh, wanted to compare it to last year's policy um, statement? Um, I, I want to, I haven't done it yet. So, it is. is there, maybe you're closer to all, to, to that table. Was there a, a bit of a shift uh, with the new um, power manager I or is it? don't know, yeah. I'd have to review I'll it. Pull it up. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at the So, last, I think some of the things in here that I found to be um, a change and great um, were some of the items about you know, having members of the board of selectmen go to other committee member, other committee meetings. So for them to actually be at other committee member, you know, other committees, liaisons, liaisons and um, it, I think that's something that we've done. I think it's amazing for them to do that as well, and uh, will hopefully prove to be really helpful. Um, I think that's given how much of a commitment mm -hmm. those folks already make. That's a really generous thing to do with their time. I'm trying to pull it up and it's not loading, but we'll see. On at least several occasions, for instance, on page two uh, under the stabilization fund, uh, part four, it says in order to replenish the stabilization fund if used in the year immediately following any drawdown, the town shall formulate a plan uh, to restore the fund to the previously identified in the TFL. So that's that sort of language is repeated there, and then again on the Next page under the other post uh, retirement benefits subpart two, and then again on the next page, number three, with regard to the uh, special education stabilization fund. And, and I was just wondering, um, no, I, lo I love the word shall because as a lawyer, that means you have a duty to do it. You're saying we're, we're, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're not going to endeavor to do it. We, we shall do it. Yeah. Um, who's going to do it, you know, and how, how are they going to do it, and, and when are they going to do it? Is it something that, that the Finance Committee um, provides? You mean replenish them? Um, well, they said formulate a plan to replenish them. Okay, is, so is that something that the Board of Selectmen uh, takes up? Or is um, no, that would be the, the town manager. and The, the town manager, so these professionals in right. town the other and end of that. Okay. And it's put in there to get for when we get into situations when, and hopefully it's no time soon, where the town gets back into financial, um, struggling financially. Right. Um, right now we're putting money in. We don't take right. time to take money, especially the right. regular stabilization fund. Right. And it's actually at the level that, which is we like to, we want to keep it within 15%. Right. We're actually at 18 right now, That's so good. We're, we're good. Capital, we basically do work a plan every year. There's a, there's a formula driven, and we try and keep to the, the, the high level. We draw down when we have big capital projects that we might periodically insert some of that capital stabilization to fund a, a new roof at yeah. one of the schools or it, is something it still, like that. For, for, for buildings like this building, yep. is it still, is the, is the percentage still somewhere between three and five percent of the value of the building per year is what that's put into it yeah <laughs> um, I'd have to have Steve Foster speak yeah. to that um, he's a facilities manager um, we I know the goal is he has funding within the capital budget every year three hundred fifty thousand, and um, you know he spreads it out and does very well with with meeting the needs that we have I mean it's 
it's timing that's the problem right. we have the funding there it's the timing of getting it done right. the process that the municipality has to go to hire a contractor is is dramatic it's right. lengthy by right. the time you get it and you get out of the season but it's it's in it's in the process right um, i'd like to hope that it's at that percentage I would have to have them calculate that and look at that for you. Right. But, um, the plan is, is we do follow the pol policy. I re we review them at the end of the year, see what the balance is, see what the, the level it should be at and manage between transfers from free cash or whatever is available right. to keep it at that level right. if we can. Is it, aren't the schools right now in a bit of a, a bind, but they're up against withdrawing two times in a row? Um, because of movements. Right, I think that yes. we've replenished it back up to the 750 in 2020, so I don't know if they have the ability to withdraw from it this year. Yeah, I mean, I just, oh, I watched I the last meeting. So and we have a you know, limit. An issue for they can only withdraw so many times. Is that a self-employed yes. restriction? Yes. yes. It is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's yeah. part of the financial policy? I mean, it, may, it makes yes. sense. I mean, if you're going to have a reserve, right. it really needs to be a reserve. And so, withdraw so every they year have, after year after year. Right. They'll have to yep. seek out their those funds somewhere else. What is it, like 400000 or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. Several it's years, difficult. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But at least they. But the we've been maintaining them, and we've yes. been doing very well on that. Yep. Um, yep. That's part of the, the operating budget. When the operating right. budget's put together, the town manager will will do the calculation. I'll do the calculation. We'll make the recommendations. When you go to the website and you go on the meeting minutes and documents, if you go to an old one and you click on it, mm -hmm. it just says the minutes. It doesn't have the documents. It doesn't? Mm -hmm. hmm. It should. Maybe it's under agendas instead, even though it says Probably. meeting minutes and documents. It's under it's agenda. Um, so I do. Just trying to pull that up for you, Thomas. I was struck. I actually the, have a copy here highlighted. <laughs> I was struck by the uh, projected liability for the uh, other post retirement benefits. That's a big number. That's I found it. That's okay. Yeah, thank you. That's a huge number. There's too many commas in this number yet. I know. <laughs> it is big. I mean, it's, yeah. And we're not the only community that's in no. the same situation. Yeah, and, well, the state is in that situation right. as well. I mean, we're only the community that actually has. And we are we have a plan. We have it. And we do we are um, um let's see. So in last year's budget policy statement they had similar information to their community development about the schools, supporting the schools to reach their strategic goals. They had some information about working with um, multifamily developers to create affordable housing units. They didn't have that in there this year. I'm assuming it's because we have um, some significant development in the pipeline. They had public safety. It's a little bit different now, um, but there was a section. This is just a different. Last year, it was regarding um, the town's comprehensive ener emergency management plan. I assume because it was right after yes. Columbia Gas. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Lost it. What else? Do you see any of the bigger ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still all, all around the master plan and sidewalks. Let's see. Uh, same with playgrounds. They were just on phase six and seven. Yep. Yeah. They talk about the recreation complex and the new senior center, hoping it is kept on schedule and on budget, both of which um, we're reevaluating. Happens. So I think a lot of them are the same, yeah. similar. Yeah. Right. Any other questions or comments about this document? Let's, um, when you're ready, we'll approve the minutes. Uh, 
um, Angela, in the attendance section, Chuck is checked off as being present and Thomas isn't. So it should be Thomas checked off and Chuck not checked off. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, the only change, I think, on page two at the bottom, um, under SW, spoke of how they want to focus on structure this year, also com commented on how LS has offered to send an actual budget on a monthly basis after the first quarter, um, an actual verse budget, or you can change it to actuals, or year, year to date, period to date, any of the above. No problem. Um, you can say a year to date, period to date. No budget. Oh, yeah, today. Just the actual year to date report. Report. Yeah. I copied it off of it. So. Okay. You okay? I'm good. Everyone else good? Move to approve the uh, September 24th minutes. Second. You, um, you just have as, as amended. I said as amended. Oh, you did? Perfect. I didn't hear. Uh, all right. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Anything else? I think we've covered everything. Thank you, Lynn. Do we have a yes. motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.